welcome back to the second part of Trinanculus. Uh, what we have seen is the affection, also the epidemiology, the agent involved in it. Now we will see the life cycle of Trinanculus. Now to understand its life cycle, we have this pictorial diagram and it's quite evident that how this particular disease will spread. So we will follow step by step and, and make you understand. See this, uh, the step one, you can see a person sitting uh, next to the water source as this person do have symptoms associated with blisters and eruption on the leg as a part of getting relief or this person might dip his leg into the water source and that is the point on contact with this water this worm which has formed the blister will burst out and freeze first stage larva into the water or accidentally or intentionally or whatever was the need of that person if that person enters into the water source the blister formed by this adult worm carrying millions of larva will enter into the water now this first stage guinea worm larva would be ingested by tiny water flea there is a cyclops and inside these water fleas, what will happen? They will mold twice and mature into the third stage larva. This process of molding from first to the third stage larva usually takes 10 to 14 days, I mean, two weeks of time. Once they have molded, what will happen? If the person consumes this water, which is already affected by these water fleas. The, they will get ingested into the stomach and in stomach under the uh, digestive juices they will get released that the larva which is in the third stage will get released although these larva do resist digestion and they migrate from the small intestine into the body cavity where they will mature grow in size in the body cavity they will grow and mature and fertilize that is male female variation could be present and they will fertilize and grow up to three feet long that is approximately one meter long they move through the connective tissues to the various parts of the body usually the lower limb whereby they have choose the lower limb because that part whenever a person enters into the water body that would be the first part to come in contact with the water This process of ingestion and the stage of transmission to the next uh, person will have a window period of around 10 to 12 months, around an year uh, time would be taken. The blister form now with this person will, will burst again when you come in contact with the thing and it could be transmitted to the next person or to the same person if that person is drinking that water. So the life cycle is quite easily understood. That is first stage, the larva would be released, ingested by the cyclops, which is the intermittent host in this particular case. The cyclops will enter into the digestive system. The cyclops will release the third stage larva because two stages of molting is occurring in the larva. This water flea or the cyclops. And from there, they will travel to the small intestine, to the body cavity where they will mature, fertilize, and form first stage larva again and they will be released again consumed by the cyclops and transmitted to the next person. So what happens is gravid female goes down infected person's lower limb near the skin surface. Worm usually penetrates into the dermis and induces an inflammatory reaction and blister is formed. Why this blister formation is required? Because it has to release its larva. So the blister would be a portal for release of these larvae. Upon contact with water, the worm burst releases up to 1 million. That is a big number. Microscopic means larva, that is the first stage larva. This larva usually remains active in water for 3 to 6 days. Now, some cyclops, crustaceans present in fresh water will take up these larvae and within a span of 10 to 14 days, which is approximately two weeks, they will develop in the cyclops 
uh, that is they will undergo two stages of molting. So the cycle of year is known as the intermittent toast. Man here acquires infection by drinking water contact containing infected cyclops. In human body, the digested the cyclops are digested by gastric juice and parasites are released. These parasites will enter into the small intestine, they will pierce the small intestinal wall and they will reach to the various parts of the body and usually here the part of that body is the lower lip. The growth time which is required for development of an adult worm is around 10 to 14 months. Signs and symptoms, intense burning pain localized to path of travel of the worm. So this is known as the fiery serpent because as this worm will travel, it will do have some affection on the nerves and that creates a burning sensation. And this burning is very intense. So the patient or the person suffering from this will actually say something is crawling and that something is creating a lot of burning sensation. Then we have fever, nausea, vomiting, and allergic reactions associated with the presence of any foreign particle in the body. It may also cause, surprisingly, it may also cause arthritis and paralysis due to death of adult one in a specific joint. Skin distress, as is required for releasing the larva into the water. And adult worm protrude from these ulcers. The adult worm, we can see the one end of this adult worm protruding out. So we have a pectoral uh, demonstration. I'll just show you how they look like. This is how they look like. This is a blister. You can see uh, this blister is associated with uh, this worm just popping out of peeping out of the blister. So the mode of transmission, uh, as we have understood, it is by drinking of contaminated water. The water contaminated with cyclops, which has already ingested the larva. And these larva and cyclops are undergone two stages of molting. So it's a totally a water-based disease. What are the ways of prevention? Obviously, educating people about uh, how to use, uh, not to use contaminated water, or how to filter the water, how to clean the water and whatever water they are using. And if the person suffering from such disease should be abstained from entering into the water pools so that uh, the transmission would spread. So community level cases detection can be done. Staff must go to, uh, people should go to go to looking for these cases and then they should educate them that uh, you, are, you are not, uh, while you are suffering from this disease, you should not use common water resources as, as it may spread to other people also. Now, treatment, metronidazole uh, and mabendazole are usually uh, used in this types of worm. Uh, wet compression also relieves the discomfort cause. It is the burning sensation and sensation of thermos caused by the presence of this. So usually these worms are removed by rolling around a stick, small stick that is known as rod of escape players. Uh, it's, so, you know, it's a word, this analogy is created as something which relieves the patient. It's a rod of treating some. Uh, so, so analogy used here. Simple surgical procedures can also be followed to remove these jobs. And both these pictures, you can see the length of this particular parasite. Now in India, the eradication program was launched around 1984. In 1996, we reported zero cases in this disease. Usually in Hindi, we call it as the Naru Road. It was quite prevalent at some point of time. In February 2000, the International Committee for Certification, Training Business Eradication, Dean of Chennai, recommended India to be certified be free from this parasite. Thank you. That's it. This was all about Training Business.